In today's video, we're going to talk about Selenium C# -sharp automation testing. So previously, we talked about using Selenium in Java, but in this long video today, we're going to talk about using C# -sharp instead. And this is going to be a very extended video, and it's going to give you a very comprehensive and in-depth tutorial. So first, I'm going to start with some background information. So this is just some general information. So Selenium was originally developed by just, uh, Jason Huggins in tw uh, 2004. Selenium is open source, uh, and Selenium consists of Selenium IDE, Selenium Grid, Selenium RC, and Selenium WebDriver. And this is what we described earlier uh, in previous videos where there's different components of Selenium. Uh, Selenium has web browser capa uh, capability uh, and uh, the compatibility, and this is with um, Chrome, Edge, Firefox, Opera, and Safari as well, uh, and HTML unit as well. Uh, Selenium also has multi-system compatibility, so it's compatible with Windows, Mac, Linux, and Selenium works well with multiple programming languages, so C Sharp, which is what we're going to talk about today, but it also works with Java, Python, and Ruby as well. But in today's video, we're going to mainly talk about C Sharp. So before we go into Selenium, there's some general background information that I'm going to quickly uh, gloss through because uh, you might have, uh, we, although we talked about this in the previous videos, uh, some new, new watchers, they might watch this video uh, and they should know this uh, before going in. So first thing we have to define is web elements and these are basically the different components on a web page. So it's text box, it's buttons, the links, the drop down lists and so on. Uh, another thing is what are locators. Uh, so locators on the web uh, are basically these addresses that you have on a website that helps the computer locate each, uh, each element on the website. So for example, Selenium uses locators to find web elements as we use addresses, phone numbers, and email addresses to find people. And that's a nice little analogy that you can use. So next, I'm going to give some examples of locators so it's a little bit more clear to you. So for example, um, Selenium has this function called byID, or there's this function called byID that you can use to locate elements whose ID attribute matches the search value that we give it. Uh, by name also matches uh, and locates elements by the name attribute so that it matches the search value. And then class, uh, so by class, it locates elements uh, according to the class value uh, and, uh, and it matches with the search value. And then there's also by CSS selector, which locates elements matching a CSS selector. So these are all ways you can find locators. And then there's also by link text, which locates anchor elements whose visible text matches the search value. And then by XPath locates matching uh, an XPath uh, expression. And so those were all just very general uh, locator, general overview of locators. And we'll be using a bunch of locators in web uh, for web elements later in this video. So next, I'm going to talk about this diagram here. So we talked about this diagram previously when we discussed Java. And so in today's video, uh, we're just going to show you this flowchart because ideally what I want to show you is that we basically have a, a language, a programming language, so Java or C Sharp, and that's part of the Selenium library. And what that does is that calls a Selenium web driver, which is the programming interface. And then this programming interface, it interacts with all of these different browsers, for example, Chrome, Edge, Firefox, Opera, uh, Safari, HTML unit. And it basically tells each of those browsers to commit some actions and it records what happens. And so this is basically the flowchart that we have. So in our project that we're going to be conducting, we're going to be using C Sharp and then we're going to call the Selenium library. And then in the Selenium, with the Selenium library, we're going to call Selenium web drivers to act on the browser of our choice and to perform a bunch of different actions. Uh, and we can tell it to perform a different bunch of different actions on each web page by using these selectors that we talked about earlier. So now, uh, how do you set up your Selenium C Sharp automation project? So we're going to first talk about setting up because some of you might be new to this. So first, what you can do and what you need to do is you need to download and install Visual Studio with .NET dash uh, C Sharp. And you can download it at this link right here. The next thing you need to do, uh, so before, actually, before we go to the next thing, I'm just going to describe what this is. So .NET dash C Sharp. So .NET is a free open source development platform for building many different types of applications. With .NET, you can use multiple languages, editors, and libraries to build for web mobile, desktop, games, and IoT. 
Uh, and then C Sharp is basically a modern, object-oriented, and type-safe programming language developed by Microsoft as part of its .NET initiative. C Sharp is designed to be simple, powerful, and versatile language for developing a wide range of applications, including desktop, web, cloud, mobile, and game development. So for our concerns, basically right now, is just a programming language and its platform. Uh, and then next what you will do is you're going to install the packages for the Selenium web driver using the NuGet package manager. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use NUnit, which is basically a testing framework which contains tags such as setup, test, and teardown. And don't worry, later we're going to go through all these steps. I just want to give you a quick overview of what we're doing so, it can, uh, so you, you get a rough idea of what's going on. Next, I'm going to go through some basic commands of Selenium C-sharp commands. And the reason I'm going to do this is because uh, I think that this will help you follow along better in the video later when you, uh, when you see these lines of commands in our text. So uh, again, this is just a few of the Selenium commands that you can use. If you want to see a more comprehensive list, you should definitely check out their documentation. So first is driver.navigate go to.url. And as the name says, this basically makes your web driver go to the specific URL that you pass. Next, driver.url. This is basically a call to the web driver to return the URL that you're at currently. Driver.title gets the title of the current page you're on. Driver.findElement. This finds the element according to its name, and then it sends keys, and then it sends Selenium into that element. Next is driver.manage.timeouts.implicitWait, and this is basically an implicit wait statement. If you're not too sure what an implicit wait is, um, just know that uh, it's basically we're telling the browser to wait some time, uh, and yeah. And this time we're saying that it's two seconds. And then next is webdriver.wait, uh, webdriver wait is equal to new webdriver wait, and this time we're using it like this. And the difference between these two wait statements is one is implicit, which is this one on the top, and the other one on the bottom is explicit. And again, if you don't know what this means, don't worry, we'll talk about it in the future. Next, alert. Uh, so this is basically, uh, we're waiting until uh, a certain condition is met. And that condition is that alert shows up. And then after that alert shows up, what we're gonna do is we're gonna accept the alert. And then next, what we have right here, this is file input. So basically, we're finding a uh, file input uh, key by the CSS uh, selector right here. And then we're sending uh, this upload uh, file. And then we're basically submitting a uh, file into that web page. OK, so finally, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you uh, the different components of the project that we're going to build today. So first, what we're going to do is we're going to use Selenium in C Sharp. Next thing we're, we're going to do is we're going to use page object models. And these are basically classes of web elements, source closes, uh, source codes, and tests. Uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to have it uh, be compatible with multiple web browsers, such as Chrome, Edge, and Firefox. And then we're going to have configurations in our project. And what I mean by configurations is, for example, it can have URLs, it can have username and passwords, so that every time we run the project, uh, these parts are segmented from the overall project. And uh, it can remember the configuration we set, so each time we're testing our web pages, it'll sign in automatically, and so on. The next thing we're going to have is text execution, so we'll execute a bunch of tests. And then we'll have the capacity to uh, screenshot what's going on during our automation test. So we'll, we'll, input, we'll implement that functionality as well into our test project. And finally, what we're going to have is we're going to format our reports afterwards into HTML files so that they're nice and neat. OK, so without further ado, now we're going to make our own project in uh, C Sharp. So I already installed Visual Studio. So I want you to install Visual Studio. Um, you can just go to their website and you should be able to install Visual Studio. So I have Visual Studio uh, 2022 right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and open it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new project. And since I mentioned earlier we're using an end uh, unit project, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down until we get to 
end unit test project and make sure it's C sharp down here and not visual basic uh, down here. So make sure you click the C sharp one. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that, click next. Uh, I'm just gonna name it test project three and then this is the repo location I have. Uh, and then yeah, have this, uh, keep this checked and then you can go ahead and click next. Uh, for me, I'm using uh, .NET 8.0. So quick create, uh, and it'll take a little bit of time to load, but it should be pretty quick, a few seconds or so. Okay, yeah, so when you first open it up, this is what it'll look like. So you'll have um, this unit test one right here, uh, file, CS file, uh, C file, and then you'll have uh, some other things over here. If you go over uh, to dependencies right here and you click this arrow downwards and you click packages, these are the packages that are already installed for you. So this is what you already have right now. But what we need to do is we need to install a few more packages. So the first package, what we're gonna install is we're gonna, how you do it is you go to um, tools right here and then you go to uh, NuGet package manager. And I'm gonna go to manage NuGet packages for solution. So go ahead and go there. And the first thing I'm gonna install is gonna be Selenium WebDriver. So go ahead and search Selenium right here. Uh, and right now it's under install, so you just have to switch to the Browse tab. You search Selenium, and the first two here, WebDriver and Support, you need to install both of them. So you click WebDriver, and then you basically check mark your project, and then uh, it's using this version. So I'm gonna go ahead and install it click apply. So that's installed now. And after it's installed, you can see the version right here. Go ahead and do the same thing for support right here. Go ahead and click install, apply. And now that's installed too. Now next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to install some of the web drivers for Chrome, Firefox, Edge, and so on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and search uh, Chrome, Selenium Chrome, uh, like that. And then I'm gonna install the Chrome driver right here. Go ahead and install that. Okay, and that's installed. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna install the Edge driver right here. So uh, MS Edge driver, you're gonna go ahead and install that. And for Firefox, uh, when we were using Firefox, for some reason, the Firefox one didn't work. So if you search up uh, Selenium Firefox, for instance, uh, right here, you see that they have their own Firefox driver. But it, didn't, it doesn't work. So what I suggest you to do, uh, unless you can figure a way around it, is you can use WebDriver Gecko Driver. And this essentially allows you to use Firefox. So I'm going to go ahead and click this, and I'm going to go ahead and install that. And I'm gonna click apply. And now if you look under packages over here, we see that we installed the support, the web driver, the Chrome driver, Gecko driver, and the Edge driver. And those things are all installed now. And now we can go ahead and close this NuGet package manager and we can go back to our code here. So this is the general structure, uh, the boil, uh, boil code that it gives you. So what you can do is go up here. So we're gonna be using some of that. So. First thing we're gonna be using, so in order to import, you basically use using and then n unit. Uh, yeah, so n unit, and that's what we're gonna use. We're also gonna be using open QA, uh, and we're gonna be using Selenium. And the next thing we're gonna use is open. QA and we're going to use Selenium Chrome dot Chrome and uh, since this is very similar what I'm going to do is just to save some time paste that and paste that and I'm going to change this one right here this is going to be Edge and this one is going to be Firefox Firefox right here and then yeah so that's good now and now we have imported all the packages we need so now under your code right here uh, this is what you have next thing what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up here 
and we're gonna use we're gonna write i web driver right here driver and this basically sets up the driver and under the setup right here we see that there's these tags right here we have setup tag with the test tag uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add up a teardown tag and this basically just um, tears down everything we created during the test and yeah uh, yeah so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna write tear down here and then I'm gonna have this tear down package with the driver uh, uh, class uh, I mean method with a quit execution so we have that now so now under the uh, setup tag now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up a driver. So I'm gonna do driver and I'm gonna set a new Chrome driver. So go ahead and set a Chrome driver. And then under that, I'm gonna do driver.manage. Uh, and then I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna window dot and I'll maximize. So this basically opens the driver and then maximizes us, and it manages it so that the window is always maximized. So now that we have that, next thing we have is uh, I'm going to go down to uh, test one here uh, under test tag, and I'm going to go ahead and go here, and then I'm going to comment this out because we don't really need it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste a few things. So I'm going to paste a few commands, and then I'll talk about each one of these. So right here, I've pasted three commands. Uh, the first command we see, this is driver.navigate.go to URL. This basically makes us go to this URL. And then these next two assert statements, these basically check that the website we're at, uh, the first one checks if the URL is equal to this URL. And the second one checks if the title of that website is this, uh, this text right here. And then if it is, then it'll pass, uh, pass the test. And if it's not, it won't pass the test. So now that we have this, uh, written this, I'm gonna go ahead and save this. And uh, since this is the first time we created this project, you're gonna have to go to build right here. And then what you need to do is you need to build the test project. So build is completed. After your build is completed, you can go ahead and go to test right here. And what you can do is you can go to test explorer uh, and once you have test explorer open up uh, since it's clicked on this test project right here uh, you see it has that I'm gonna go ahead and click this left arrow uh, right here to run all tests in view and we'll give it some time to run and basically opens up the Chrome driver maximizes the window goes to this URL and now it's checking the two assert statements. And since both of the assert statements were true, we see that uh, it says the test passed. But if, for instance, if I was to change one of the assert statements right here, for example, if I add like a zero, go ahead and save this file. Uh, and then I go to test explorer and I run this again. we see that the test fails because it's not true. There is no zero in the title. So for now, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, erase this zero. And now I'm gonna show you how we can perform the same stuff, but like the same thing we just did, but using the Edge driver and using the Firefox browser. So I'm gonna go ahead and comment out this Chrome driver, but now I'm gonna use driver is equal to new. And this time I'm gonna use Edge driver. Go ahead, use Edge Driver now. Go ahead and save it. Uh, I can go here, go to Test Explorer. I just like using Test Explorer because it's a little bit more clear than using the command prompt. Uh, go ahead and run that. See, this time it opens an Edge browser. Down here, you can see it's an Edge browser. And then we see that all tests pass. Uh, so that's using Edge. Now I'm going to show you how we can use Firefox. And remember, we use, we're using Gecko, but we didn't install Firefox, but we're using Gecko and it should still work. So we go driver is equal to new. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use Firefox uh, driver right here, save it, and then go back to Test Explorer, run.
and we see it opens a Firefox browser instead now. And then we see that all, all of the tests passed. So yeah, this is a very simple uh, project, that, a very simple demo project that we have built right now using this. So we basically go to this website and we're checking for these two statements. So next, I'm going to show you some other things we can do with Selenium. So before we do that, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to import some more packages that we're going to be using. So the first thing that I'm going to be importing is I'm going to import, uh, I'm just going to copy and paste it over and I'll tell you afterwards. So I'll just go here. And so here are two more things I'll be importing. So Selenium Interactions, uh, Selenium Support UI, and then Weight Helpers. And so to, in order to use Weight Helpers, Again, you'll have to uh, install some extensions. So go manage extensions, or uh, uh, not extensions, but packages. So go to tools, go to NuGet package manager, uh, manage packages for solutions. And right here, I'm gonna search up, um, I'm gonna search up .NET, uh, Selenium right here and I'm gonna install this first one so dot net Selenium extras dot weight helpers and so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and click that go ahead and click install we'll give it some time to install and now it's installed okay cool so after you have that what you'll uh, we'll go ahead and do is so last time we made test one here well, this time we're going to make a few more tests. So the first test that we're going to do is uh, we're going to use, uh, we're going to make a text for a text box. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, paste this over here. We're using the test tag and I'm actually going to half size this window right here so that we can see what we're testing on the other window. So I'm going to have this side open uh, and I'm going to drag both of these down like this. So and now I'm going to go ahead and close this. So I can go ahead and do that. So first in this text box, what we're going to do is we're going to go to this URL by using this dot navigate dot go to URL command. And we're going to go to this ADM Lucid uh, uh, website, uh, web URL right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to find an element by ID. So text one element, and that should just be this element right here. And if you have your own website, and you're not sure what it is, you just right click and then you click inspect on the element and then you'll be able to find the element. So right here it says ID is text one. If you want to use other locators, you just right click again and then you can go to copy and then you can find other locators for that element. So we go to that element, we clear and then we use dot send keys to enter this into that element right here. So that's the first test that we'll make. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to make a second test. So I will, again, I will copy and paste over um, the, the code that we have for the second test. So again, we start with the tag test. We uh, escape and we enter. And then now we have uh, test area. And again, it goes to the same URL. So this URL right here. And then it finds uh, test area two. And so if I sidebar over here, horizontally test area is right here and the second one is right here and then it uses send keys uh, to enter some text into this area so that's the second test now we'll go ahead and move on to the third test that we'll be making so again we'll paste it over so in the third test it's button test and again it goes to the same URL so this URL right here and then what it does is it finds the ID for button 1 and so button one, if we go to the side here, it's this button right here. And so if we click button one, uh, we'll, we'll tell it to click button one, and then we'll tell it to wait for one second, and then we'll tell it to accept the alert. This is because uh, if you click the button, so let me just refresh this page, there'll be an alert after you click the button. You just press OK. So that's that. 
Now we will go uh, and do some more tests for this web page. So. Uh, again, this time it's uh, for radio button and checkboxes. And so what it does is it, um, it looks for checkbox one and radio two, which are found respectively here, checkbox one and radio box two, and it clicks it. Next, we'll be testing the file input. So again, go ahead and press enter. And in this one, we, uh, we find file four, so it should be right here. That's file four, and then it uses send keys and it enters this directory for a file. We're using the at here so that we don't have to double slash every time before we change directories. So that's that. Uh, and then next, we will be testing a form submit. So go ahead and enter this. So again, for form submit, we go to the same website here, and then this time what we're doing is we're going to this form and we're entering a bunch of information and then sending the result of the form. So we're entering our name right here, we're entering our email address, entering the telephone number, selecting our gender, we're uh, entering age, so this is a drop down, uh, so we find the drop down and we select four from the drop down. We find the drop down for service and we select child care. And then afterwards, we're using finding the name submit and we're using submit rather than clicking send. And then we'll sleep for uh, one second. So we'll wait for one second. And then again, we'll accept the alert that pops up. Okay, now next, what we're going to do is we're going to be testing something a little bit different. So this time, uh, I'm gonna paste over what we have first. So this time, instead of testing the website that we had earlier, we're gonna be going to this website, which is right here, and we're gonna click online subsidies and estimators. So what is that? Well, that is on this website. We're going to click on uh, online subsidy estimators. So if we look for that, right here, online subsidy estimator. And we're going to click it. And since what happens after you click it is it opens a new window, what we're actually going to do is we're going to tell the Selenium that we're going to be switching windows and testing the other window. So, uh, basically, uh, if we look at that um, right here, this is switching the windows, and we're going to use switch to dot window window. And then there's two things right here, a few things right here that I want to first bring up. So the first is that uh, up here, we have these commented out, but essentially this is an implicit wait, and it just basically tells the computer to wait five seconds and then test for conditions on the web page. Below, we have explicit waits. And so basically what this does is it tells the computer to wait until a certain condition is met and then test for the web page. So up here, uh, so down here, uh, we're basically telling it the expected condition is that, um, the H1, so the first header uh, on this page, is equal to child care subsidy estimator. And so this is what we're testing for right here. And so later when I'm testing, I'll show you what happens if we don't use the wait statements and when we do use the wait statements. And finally, the final test we're going to add, uh, I'll add it down here. This is basically, um, we're going to our original website. So this website right here, and we're testing to see if the first header uh, on this web page is equal to web element and locators, so like that. And we're testing if the second header, uh, or, or the, the first of the of, uh, H2, is childcare registration right here. And we're testing if that's equal. And yeah, so these are all the tests that we'll be introducing in today's video. And let me just run it and show you how uh, it looks. Next, I'm gonna run each of these tests. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to tools, I'm gonna to go to test 
manager. So NuGet package manager. Uh, not there actually. I'm gonna go to tools. Uh, or I'm gonna go to test. I'm gonna go to test explorer, and then I'm gonna go through each of these tests and run them individually. So first, I'm gonna run button. Next, I'm going to run file input. Next, I'm going to run form submit. Next, I'm going to run multiple windows. We see that this fails, but if we go back to our code, we see that we can actually uncomment this wait statement. And now if we run this again, It works as expected. Following, I'm going to run radial checkbox. I'm going to run test one. text area. I'm going to run text box. Finally, we're going to run web element test. And now we see that they all work. So for each of them, it doesn't close the window automatically. And that's because we uh, commented out driver quit right here. But yeah, so we ran through all the tests that we talked about earlier. Next up, we're going to implement page object models into our test. So right here, I have a brand new project. And I'm just going to walk you through how we set up this project so that we can start building more off of it. So first, since we want to run, uh, since we want to implement page object models, we're going to have to input, uh, import a few dependencies. So uh, I want you to go to uh, 
your dependencies right here. So right now, if I go to packages, there's two packages that I imported that are very necessary for page object models. So right here, .NET Selenium Extras .page objects and page objects .core. So those two things I implemented and installed into this project so that we can use it. So again, if you don't remember, how do we uh, get these? We'll go to tools, we go to NuGet Package Manager, we click on Manage NuGet Package for Solutions. And we can just search for it right here. So page objects right here and objects core, go here and you can just install it. I already have it installed, so you can just follow these steps and click install to install it. But yeah, so that's the first step you need to do. The second step that you have to do is you want to create the structure of a page object model uh, project. So what we have here is under right here, we have a, a package or a folder pages. And within that folder, we have a few tests. So we have the login page.cs class, and then we have the login test one class. So I will show you what's inside each of these classes first. So let me go to login page.cs class. So if I click that, right here, we see we're importing um, a bunch of stuff. So we're importing page object models too now. And right here, we have a very basic class. Uh, the first thing we do is within this login page, we're identifying which element in the web page is corresponding to the input email, which element in the web page is corresponding to input password, and which element in the web page is the button that you use to log in and submit. And with that, what we do is we come down to here, we have our login uh, method. And with the login method, we use send keys to enter the username, send keys to enter the password, and then we click the button to basically some enter uh, the username and password and log in. So this is a very simple case of, um, of our method that we, get, we call upon later in our test classes. So if we go to our test class right here, we see in this test class, we call upon uh, the methods uh, within the login page right here. So right here, we have a string user and string username. So for the username and string password for the password. And for those that are not familiar with this yet, um, what we have is we, we set up a configuration file to essentially have um, these. So basically right here under uh, solution items right here, we created our dot run settings uh, configuration file. And inside this configuration file, it just looks like this. We, we specify a parameter user, we specify a parameter password, and we specify a login URL. And we just have it right here. And so basically in our test class, we can just call upon those and uh, we'll have those in the global setting. Um, I guess above it, uh, we have a few other things too. We, we set up with a new Chrome driver and uh, that's under the set tag, under the test tag. Yeah, we have this. We create an instance for the login page. And so this is necessary because we wanna use this login page uh, class that we uh, specified earlier. So we create an instance for it. And then with the instance, we can call upon methods within the instance. So we have the login. So basically if we go LG dot, uh, you see there's this login that we can call upon and stuff. And there's some other methods as well, but we don't need that right now. And then uh, right here, so we use driver.navigate, we go to the URL. So the login URL that's specified globally and then we use the username and password to log in. And yeah, so that's a very simple structure of a page object model. Uh, one more thing. So in order to use this global configuration file dot run settings, you actually have to go to tools, you have to go to options, and then you have to go to your under test, you have to go to general and you have to check auto detect run settings file. So make sure you have that checked up and it'll detect the run settings file. And now what we can do is we can go to our test, uh, test explorer. Uh, I'm gonna clear this results. And I'm gonna go ahead and run this. And we should see it enter the username, password, and login.
And yeah, there you go. It passes the test. Next, I've created some new classes in our project, and I'm going to run through them. So first, I created a booking page, uh, .cs class. And so I'm going to walk through this and tell you a little bit about what it does. But essentially what it does is it goes to this website right here and it clicks on booking golf course. So you book a golf course and it enters a bunch of information and then it creates the booking for the golf course. So that's what this class will do. So I'm going to go ahead and close this and I will show you what we have inside the class. So right here we have a uh, class to show you all the different things that it does. But later on, in order to run the test, we have separate classes down here, three of them, for Chrome, Edge, and Firefox browsers, where you run those instead to see if, um, see if uh, what you expect to happen happens. So right now, uh, I'm gonna start from the top here. We have a bunch of different variables that we created. And the first one is just the driver for iWebDriver. But as we go down, we see that we created a bunch of different variables for the booking button. We defined its uh, selector right here. So we used XPath and we defined that as the booking button. And then we also defined some other things such as golf name select using uh, the ID, customer text, email, phone text, date text, start time text, end time text, and the create button. And we all specif and we specified the location of these uh, right here using their IDs and the last one the button using XPath as well and so what this does is this allows our class to know where the specific elements and web elements on the web page uh, where they're located and how we can access them so after we do that we have uh, one class here and this is the booking page uh, uh, method uh, sorry I, 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 uh, I meant method uh, and what this does is this initiates this class uh, booking page and then we have the booking method. And the booking method is what we want to, uh, is what we uh, have for it to intend to do. So what it does is first, it goes to the URL for golf URL. And again, uh, as we mentioned earlier, this golf URL, it's specified in the dot run settings right here. And so uh, you have these variables in dot run settings that you can directly call upon. For example, golf URL using this text context. After that, what we do is we tell it to click the button for uh, booking. And uh, as we mentioned, we specified the selector for that button right here. And if you're not familiar with how to find the selectors of a method, what you can do is you can go to uh, the page that you're looking at. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to this web page, And I'm gonna go to here. And you can right click the element that you wanna look at and click inspect. And with that, you can see uh, right here, if we go to copy, you can copy its XPath, its uh, selector, and it's a, very, a bunch of different uh, web locators, whatever, whichever one you wanna use. And that's what we did here. So after it clicks that button, what it does is it uses uh, golf name select here. Uh, and uh, basically what it does is it goes through the fields that we have in uh, the book golf course right here and it fills it out and then creates the um, creates the booking. So right here we can see that it fills Tiger A, John Smith, email, phone number. Uh, right here is the date and time. And then it fills up the start time and end time and then it uses the create button uh, to click it. And so that is what we have so far. Uh, and in order to run this again, we mentioned that we have a Chrome, Edge and Firefox and they differ by the browser that they use. And so for the purpose of this test, let's run Chrome. So I'm gonna go ahead and go here. And as you see in here, we essentially, we, we specify uh, the web driver and then we use a new Chrome driver and then we basically create instance for the class, for booking page, and then we run it using the method. And so in order to run this, what we have is we can just right click this method and then we can click run test. And uh, now what we can do is we can see, we see that there's um, right here, this is test bookings. So I'm gonna clear this test result. 
and I'm going to go ahead and run this again. So it goes to the book golf course button, fills out the thing, and then creates the booking. And as we can see, uh, we have our booking at the very top here, and it has all the same details that we have. And the bottom two was just me testing to see if it worked from earlier, so it really only created this top row right here. So next, I'm going to show you the golf page class. So that's right here, is what I have right here. And similar, in the golf page class, we have one class that specifies all the different testing methods, and then another class that calls those methods and sees if each method works on our web page. So I'm going to go through this class first, but before I do that, I want to show you what the website looks like, uh, the website that we're testing. So again, we go to adiumlucid.com, and then we can go to golf course. And under golf course, there are several functionalities that we'll be testing in this class. The first one is that we're going to be testing the search button. So after you search for something, we're going to test if uh, we get the result that we search for. That's the first thing. And we're also testing for if the column headings, name, address, description, and this email icon and phone icon, these all exist in your search option. After that, what we're going to test for, so I'm going to first clear these, we're going to test for the filter button. And so what you can do is you can go here and we can select a country, Canada, and we can go ahead and filter, and we're going to see if it filters properly. And how the filtering works is we're going to see if the address column, if it contains Canada within its address. And if so, then we successfully filtered by country. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to filter by add golf course, or we're going to test the add golf course function. So after we click add golf course, you have to be a user in order to add golf course. So I'm going to go ahead and copy some of the user log information, which we already specified in the run settings file in our, in our, uh, in our project. Go ahead and paste over the password, and I'm going to log in. And we see that right here, we can fill in the information for the golf course and we can create and edit it and add it. If we go back to the list, after we create a golf course, um, if it's a golf course that we created ourselves, beside the details button, we can see an edit button. And that edit button will allow us to edit the information of the golf course. And there will also be a delete button that allows you to delete the golf course. So those are two other functionalities that we'll test and I'll point out later uh, when, when it comes up. But yeah, so that's what we're going to be testing. I'm going to make sure to log out right now. And I'm going to go to uh, the class now. So again, we see it starts very similarly. We have all the different uh, things that we need to use that we import. And then we have here where we specify a bunch of different uh, variables. After that, Right here, we specify all the different web elements that we'll be using on our web page. So to name a few, I'm not going to go through all of them because this is a very repetitive process. Uh, we have search text, uh, for example, the search button, the column name, column address. And then down here, we have like the login button, we have the password text, email text. Uh, we have a delete save button, delete text, uh, delete link as well. Uh, and all of these uh, locators uh, we can get using the inspect button on our web page. So this is something, this is just like how we did earlier. So after you do that, right here we have a method to initiate this class as well, similar to before, uh, and we see it's right here. So now we can move on into the methods which perform each of the tasks. So the first one is the search button. And right here we see that first we, before we do anything, is we clear the, the text in the search button, make sure there's nothing there first, and then we send search strings. So search strings we specify here as a parameter so we can search anything we want, and then we click search, and then after that we assert that the column's name, address, and description are found so that uh, we keep the column headings, and then we search that the first column name is equal to the search string. So that is the search method. After that, we have a select method. 
which is for the uh, selecting the countries. And right here, we specify which country we want to select. And we have the um, select by text option here for the country. And then after we click filter, we see if the name, address, and description columns are there. And once again, we see if the address, uh, the addresses, they contain this country as a substring somewhere along the line. So that's filter. Next is add golf course. So we click add golf course button and then we enter our username and password, which again is specified in the dot run settings file right here. And then we enter all these information into our, uh, into our field. And then we click create to create the golf course. And just a few things to notice is that we use send keys to send uh, the options we want to select inside the text boxes. And yeah, so that's what we use right here. So after that, we have the edit golf course, which after we create a golf course, we can now edit it. So we see that we again have to log in. And uh, again, we have to log in. After we log in, we can go to the golf course we have, and then we can, uh, we can, enter we can edit some things so here we edit to testing golf course a instead of testing golf course a uh, so up here we have testing golf course a and right here what we do is we edit a few things so for example the owner we edit to adm test 2 uh, and so we search for testing golf course A's, and then we edit the owner right here and then we click save after we have the delete golf course and so for delete golf course this is just, we want to delete the golf course entirely. And so again, we log in here. After we log in, we can go down here and we can navigate to the golf course that we want by searching for it, uh, testing golf course A. And then we click the delete button and then we delete. Next, finally, we have a take screenshot method. And this is something different. This is not actually texting a functionality on our web page, but what this does instead is it takes a screenshot of our browser and it saves it in this directory right here so that we can look at the screenshot later on to see if everything we have is running correctly. So this is something that we didn't do previously. And what this does uh, is it takes a screenshot and this uses something called extant report. And so if I go all the way up here, uh, you'll notice that we use uh, extent report here. And that's basically what this uh, is using. It uses this package extent report, which allows us to screen take a screenshot of our browser. So yeah, so that's our golf class. Now we can go to right here and we see that we have three different classes for the golf test. And we have a Chrome, Edge, and Firefox one, which again allows us to test our classes, uh, our class, within three different browsers, so Chrome, Edge, and Firefox. So if I open one, we see that, again, we use we import all these methods, uh, these packages, and we also set up, we do uh, right here, uh, we basically call upon each of the classes that we'll be using, or each of the methods I'll be using. So we have search text uh, for a search button, uh, the search functionality. This is for the selecting country functionality, for the adding golf course functionality, editing the golf course afterwards and deleting the golf course. So we have a method for each of those. And we can go ahead and run these by right clicking right here. And we can go to run test. And it's just building right now. So after it builds, it's running test. So we see it uses a search button, searches for Sky Golf Course, and it tests it if it's there. And if we want to test some other things, we can go here. So that was a search test. Now we can run the add golf test. So adding a golf course. And again, it clicks at golf course, logs in, enters the information of the golf course, and then creates the golf course. And we don't close the browser for this one because I want to show you that if we go to all the very end right here, that the golf course we just added right here, it's right here. And it has an edit and delete button 
that allow us to work with later on. So now I'll close the browser and now I'm going to use the edit golf course. So go ahead and run this. I'm going to make sure to run the edit golf course first so we don't, we don't delete the golf course before we edit it. And now it searches for the golf course. So log in first. Now go ahead, search for the golf course, create edit, change the owner name, and now it's done. So if we go to here, uh, we go to the golf course right here, testing A, uh, this will have a different owner now. Uh, next, we're gonna show you the select one. So we'll go ahead and run this. So this should filter by country. And we see that it clicks the select country, so it should click it soon. Or it's already uh, filtered by country right here, and it filters by United States, and it's filtered all of them by United States right here. And we see that every single one of these entries, they should contain United States. But um, again, I think something went wrong, so let me run this again. selects the drop downs, enters United States, and now all of these golf courses are our United States. So United States, United States, United States, United States, and United States. Now finally, the delete golf course. Go ahead here, click run. We see it's enter, uh, logs in first. And then it should search for the golf course that we're looking for. It finds it and then it clicks the delete button and deletes the golf course. So now if I go to the very end, the golf course is no longer there. Yeah, so we see that all of those tests, they pass accordingly. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a slight modification to one of these classes that we have in golf right here. And the intention of this is to make it the test fail so that we see that this test actually runs and tests our web page accordingly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and go to search string right here. And under these assert statements, I'm gonna change something slightly so that uh, we know that this should be wrong so right here, under name right here, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add uh, maybe incorrect. And by doing this, this should assert, um, this should not be the same because when we see that the column name text for that one column, which uh, if I go back to here, uh, right here, uh, right here, this column, it won't contain incorrect in it and so this should fail. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this and I'm gonna go back to our testing class right here. And I'm gonna go to search test right here. Go ahead and click run test. So it's gonna build first. And now it's gonna run search test again right here as you see. And it's finished running. And if we go back to right here, we see that it fails uh, because um, as we see, expected string length 15, but was six. Uh, basically, the string, they differed uh, because of that. And so we see that this test runs accordingly as how we expect it to. So if it's not the same uh, column name, then it will fail. Next, I'm going to talk about using extent report and taking screenshots. I know I mentioned it a little bit earlier, uh, but now I'm going to go more in depth about this. So the first thing I want to talk about is the packages that you need uh, in order to uh, do extent, use extent reports and in order to take screenshots. So first, in order to take screenshots right here, uh, some of the packages that we need, if I go all the way up, uh, is selenium support.ui. So this allows us to take screenshots. And then we also need extent reports to basically uh, create extent reports. And in order to get these packages, Again, what we can do is we can go to Tools, we can go to NuGet Package Manager, uh, we can click on Manage NuGet Packages for Solution, 
And for example, for extent reports, what you do is you go ahead and you search extent, uh, and you can install this first one that we have here, extent reports. We already have it installed, but you can go ahead and install by following these instructions uh, on here. So after you do that, uh, now I'm gonna show you this class down here. So uh, right here, this is just a simple class to take a screenshot or a simple method to take a screenshot. And this first one, we create an instance for TS and this uses uh, support UI. So Selenium support UI, the package uh, right here. And then after right here, we create a file name. And so we have the package uh, directory here and then we have the screenshot name. And then we also add the date because this will allow us to spe uh, be able to distinguish between each of our screenshots. And this pack, uh, this folder we see uh, is just right here uh, inside our project directory. So it's under screenshot right here. So we have some screenshots from earlier, but we'll look at the screenshots later on. And then right here, so actually I'll open one screenshot for you and you can see what it looks like. So this is one screenshot we have, so golf. And you can see that this is what the screenshot looks like. It's just a very simple screenshot. So that's a screenshot. Next, what we have here is we have get screenshot and we save it as the file name right here. And then we write file name. And then, so it's a try catch statement. If it fails, then we write that the screenshot wasn't able to be taken. And so that's a very simple take screenshot. Again, another thing that we can do is we can use extent reports. And so what I did was I actually went back to the search method right here. So this was the original search method but now I changed it so that it uses extent reports. And I'll walk you through each of the steps in the search method so that you know what's happening. So the first thing we do right here is we specify a string for the screenshot and this will be the screenshot name. And then we also specify um, extent, so a new extent report. And then we use the directory for the reports. So this time this is a new directory and it's under reports right here. And then we add the date into it as well and we create an HTML file. And we basically use extent attached report to create that report. Um, and now what we do, uh, now we have an empty report. So after that, we basically, uh, we do a, uh, we start our test for search option, our search functionality in the golf court page. And we, well, how we do this was we use some try and catch statements. The reason we use the try and catch statements is because in most cases, you only want to take a screenshot when your test fails. So this try and catch statement will allow us to do that. So in the first try and catch statement right here, we clear the search tag options and then we basically send search string and we search button and we click the search button. And this will basically search for what we're looking for. And then if the test passes, then we just say test passed uh, uh, for a search for golf test. Uh, but if it fails, well, then what we do is we use the catch statement right here and then we say, no such element is found, test fails. We take a screenshot right here, and then we add the screenshot into the extent report right here. That's the first catch statement. The second try and catch statement we have is right here, where we're trying to see if each of the column values, for example, name, address, and description, matches what we have right here, and that the, the entries that we find after using the search button, they match this. Uh, search string that we specify. And again, if it passes, then we just say test pass. But if it fails, we use a catch statement to catch that. And we say that it fails. And then we add the screenshot into our extent report. So that's what we have right here. And I'm just going to run this for you and show you what it looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. And now I'm going to go back to test uh, golf test uh, right here. And I'm going to go to search test right here. I'm going to run this again. So run test. It's building the project because we changed a few things in it. And now it's running the test. So it'll look the same because it's basically going through everything in our report to see if um, everything that we specified earlier to see if it matches or not. So now it's done. And, it, uh, and now it's still running, but it'll say that something went wrong. And if we go back to our golf page right here, I'm going to minimize this. Um, 
we see that something went wrong um, and that's because if we go to here we added this and button and the reason we added this and uh, to character right here is so that it will take a screenshot when something fails and we see that in the second try and catch statement something fails so in our extent report we would expect to see it take a screenshot so now we can go to the extent report so i'm going to go ahead and go to this one so this is the date that it has which is the one that we took most recently so i'm going to go ahead and click that and we see our extent report we see that it's called search test uh, which is basically what we're testing for and what we're, we're documenting in this extent report and it basically has that validate golf course table failed but search for golf course passed and here's some information and it has a screenshot of what failed and what passed so we can see right here so that's very nice uh, and if we go to our screenshots uh, for example if we go to the one that was taken today so this one right here we see a screenshot here as well but yeah so we only did that for this one method right here but if you wanted to do it uh, for other methods it's the same logic you apply the try and catch statement and you use these in the beginning to specify the file and create an empty and initialize an empty extent report. Uh, I guess I'll leave this as an exercise for yourselves um, if you wanted to try and create the extent report for the other methods. But yeah, so this concludes this one hour uh, video about Selenium in C Sharp. If you enjoyed this video, please give this video a like. Uh, in this video, we give a very basic uh, introduction to using Selenium. So um, using Selenium can be very complex and so we, gave, we decided to go with the first a gentle introduction to it. If you like this video, in the future we will be uh, making more advanced videos about Selenium using C Sharp. So stay tuned, subscribe to our channel, and we hope to see you next time. Thank you for listening.